On a seemingly ordinary day in 1919, the residents of Boston's North End were about to experience an event that would go down in history as one of the most bizarre disasters ever. It was January 15, 1919. The air was crisp, the city was bustling, and in the heart of it all stood a mammoth storage tank belonging to the Purity Distilling Company. This wasn't just any tank, it was a colossal structure filled to the brim with 2.3 million gallons of molasses. Picture it, a sweet, sticky sea contained within the heart of a buzzing city. The tank was nestled amongst the city's buildings, a silent giant amidst the urban hustle and bustle. The weather was typical for a Boston winter, chilly but clear. The city was alive with activity, the residents going about their day, unaware of the impending disaster. The city's heartbeat was steady, its breath regular, its eyes wide open yet unseeing. The air was dense with the sweet scent of molasses, a constant reminder of the city's thriving distilling industry. Yet it was a smell the residents had grown accustomed to, a part of their daily lives. Little did they know, this seemingly ordinary day was about to take a turn for the extraordinary. No one could have predicted that this day would turn from ordinary to extraordinary in a matter of moments. Suddenly the massive tank burst, unleashing a wave of molasses that rushed through the streets at a staggering speed of 35 miles per hour. Imagine, if you will, a wave not of water, but of a thick, sticky substance moving at the speed of a car on a highway. It took mere moments for the monstrous wave to engulf the North End neighborhood of Boston, transforming the cityscape into a surreal scene from a disaster movie. The wave was relentless. It surged forth, demolishing buildings, tossing vehicles aside like toys, and tragically sweeping people off their feet. The panic and shock among the residents were palpable. They were in the throes of an unimaginable catastrophe, their ordinary day turned upside down in the blink of an eye. The molasses wave was not only swift, but dense. Its density added a lethal force to its speed, making it a destructive double-edged sword. It was a force of nature that left devastation in its wake, a scene that would be etched in the memories of the survivors for decades to come. The aftermath was heartrending. Twenty-one lives were lost to the sweet yet deadly wave. A further 150 individuals were left injured, their lives forever marred by the molasses flood. This was not just a disaster, it was a tragedy, a dark chapter in the city's history that was as baffling as it was heartbreaking. The city was now covered in a sticky, sweet, and deadly flood. The aftermath of the molasses flood was as sticky and complicated as the disaster itself. In the immediate wake of the event, rescue efforts sprang into action. But this was no ordinary rescue operation. The sticky, thick molasses that had caused such devastation now became an obstacle in the path of the rescuers. Its viscous nature made it difficult to move, to search, to rescue, hindering their efforts and adding to the complexity of an already unprecedented situation. In response to the tragedy, a class action lawsuit was filed against the United States Industrial Alcohol Company, the parent company of Purity Distilling. The plaintiff sought justice for the lives lost, the injuries sustained, and the destruction caused by the flood. The case wound its way through the courts, culminating in the company being held accountable for the disaster. They were ordered to pay out $628,000 in damages, a significant sum for the time, but could it ever truly compensate for the loss and suffering? The impact of the molasses flood was not limited to the immediate aftermath. The cleanup operation was a Herculean task that took several weeks to complete. But even after the last traces of molasses were scrubbed away, its presence lingered. The area continued to carry the scent of molasses, a haunting reminder of the disaster that had occurred. Even after the cleanup for years to come, the area would continue to smell of molasses, a sweet reminder of a bitter disaster. So what caused this sugary calamity? Let's delve into the contributing factors to this bittersweet tragedy. The primary cause was the poor construction of the storage tank. Remember, this was a colossal vessel designed to hold over 2 million gallons of molasses. However, it was hastily and inadequately built, which led to its eventual failure. Then we have the factor of insufficient testing. The tank was filled to the brim without any prior testing for possible leaks or structural weaknesses. This oversight proved to be a grave mistake. Next, let's consider the thermal expansion. The temperature in Boston fluctuates dramatically, especially in winter. The molasses inside the tank would expand and contract with these changes, straining the already weak structure of the tank. 
Lastly, the density of the molasses played a significant role. Molasses is a thick, viscous liquid, denser than water. When the tank burst, the molasses rushed out with incredible force, creating a wave that caused immense damage and loss of life. The Molasses Flood of 1919, a tragedy that taught us the importance of safety and caution in the most unexpected of ways.